So, if I am here with my hat on in my dad's jacket, we know we're going to be talking about mysteries. And today I am going to be doing an updated list <laughs> of my top 10 murder mysteries. I last did this list. I've only done it once and I did it two and a half years ago. So I feel like that's enough time. The list has changed somewhat. Some of it's still the same because there's still some bangers, you know, some classics on there. But we've got quite a lot of new books. When I last did this list, there were some four stars on here because I'm so picky with murder mysteries. There was, I think, two or three books at the bottom of the list that I'd given four stars, maybe one 4.5. This time it's all absolute five stars and all books I absolutely recommend. I have grouped some series together, otherwise this list would be quite repetitive. But shall we just get into it? One of my favourite murder mysteries, the murder mysteries I'd really recommend if you're looking to get into murder mysteries, if you've never read them before, this is where I'd recommend you start. And we're gonna go from number 10 to number one. Should we do it? I'm so excited, let's get into it. Okay, coming in at number 10 is our first from the Queen of Crime. It is Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. One of my, I love these editions. <laughs> I love, oh, they like speak to me. I love these editions of the Agatha Christie books. And this is not the last Agatha Christie we shall be seeing on this list. There's one more Agatha Christie on this list. So this is my in my top two Agatha Christie's. And Death on the Nile is an interesting one because obviously it's very, we all kind of know the general vibe of this. There's a boat on the Nile and there's a murder <laughs> and Poirot is gonna solve it. And this is an interesting one because in contrast to the uh, other Agatha that we have on this list, I wouldn't say the twist in this is anything special, right? I wouldn't say it's shocking, right? When you compare, you know, we'll talk about the other Agatha or like something like the murder of Roger Ackroyd, which was on the list last time I did this, it has a wonderful twist. This, this twist is like fairly forgettable. However, this is one of those books that Christie does the atmosphere and the setting so well and it just makes I love theatrics to a murder mystery that's why it's fun right like as someone who grew up loving I did drama I did like acting well I love a production you know there's something about some of these settings that Agatha does and I'm sure that I've got many more to read that just feels so camp <laughs> it's camp it's camp I don't know what to tell you and you know this comes from her traveling with her second husband who was an archaeologist and she traveled to Egypt she traveled all over the world in that period of her life and there's a lot of books that reflect that and I just think she captures a time and a place so so well and it's so vivid and the mystery and the murder is good as well but this one for me is just very solid overall like for example if we're talking about the murder of Roger Ackroyd I don't love the majority of that book, but I think it's one of the best twists in a murder mystery ever. Like the her writing that, revolutionary. <laughs> like it's a it's an amazing twist. Whereas this one, I just really enjoyed the book throughout. We've got a lot of interesting characters. We've got kind of like a love triangle. There's like a couple and the guy's ex on the boat, and there's just a really interesting cast of characters. Um, that he, she does really well. So yeah, I really really enjoyed Death on the Nile. Coming in at number. Nine is a really fun one. It is True Crime Story by Joseph Knox. So this one is mixed media. It's all told through interviews. In the early hours of Saturday, 17th December 2011, Zoe Nolan, a 19 year old Manchester University student, walked out of a party taking place in the shared accommodation where she had been living for three months. She was never seen again. And this is all a series of interviews with her friends and family trying to piece together what happened to her. And firstly, <laughs> I just love mixed media. I love mixed media. I did listen to an audiobook for this and it is full cast, so I would recommend that. But like, similar to Days Jones and the Six, which I spoke about recently, it doesn't say who it is at the start of every time they start speaking. So you have to kind of remember voices if you're just audiobooking it. So I would recommend for like a full experience, having your audiobook and the physical. I don't recommend that a lot, even though I do that a lot. <laughs> a little bit of a bad habit. I don't recommend that because it's obviously like expensive getting both but I think this is one where that would really benefit the story and this is one's a really interesting one because not only is it interviews but there's these emails and Joseph Knox is a character and there's like a there's a publisher's note at the beginning from Penguin Random House like clarifying their position with Joseph Knox and he Joseph Knox comes into the story at certain points. She's an icon she's a legend and she is the moment. Now come on now. And it's just such an imaginative, fun way to tell a story. I, I'm just a sucker for it. I'm a sucker for mixed media. I'm a sucker for like breaking the fourth wall. I just love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. I thought the reveal of the murder mystery was really, really good. I thought the characters that were picked were very interesting, hearing from their perspectives. But yeah, I just had a lot of fun with the way this was told and the different elements to it. And there's like emails with notes and stuff redacted and crossed out. And I really enjoyed kind of like the university settings. It's kind of 
of scary. Like, you know, a young girl off at university for the first time, like stuff can go wrong easily. And so you're just like, I don't know. I just thought it was an interesting setting. The hat is falling off and I'm getting hot in this jacket. Let me just air it out a little bit. <laughs> Coming in at number eight is One by One by Ruth Ware. This is probably my favorite Ruth Ware and this is her most murder mystery book. I feel like people did not get this when it came out and I'm deeply upset because since then she is not writing murder mysteries. Well, I one, is it One Perfect Couple, her release this year? I have a bit of hope with that one. I'm not gonna lie to you. There's something about that one that gives me a little bit of murder mystery tease. But this is her most like Christie inspired murder mystery and we're following these characters who go on a company retreat to this ski lodge, ski village. They are all in this lodge together. You find out at the beginning, there's a, there's a news article from a BBC website that four people have been found dead. So you're trying to figure out obviously who it is and I just love Ah, I love this. So you're reading from a few different perspectives. This one's an interesting murder mystery because you know from a certain point who it is, right? They're, it's like they're getting killed off one by one. It's kind of, and then they went uninspired, but like not scheduled killings, which I don't like. So I like this and then they went unretelling. But what's interesting is you know from a certain point who that is. So it's a little bit different than some murder mysteries. And how that builds the tension is so good. <laughs> it's so good. But I just wish Ruth Ware would do more stuff like this because she had, you know, an unlikable, rich cast of characters that you kind of love to hate, that you don't mind who dies and that's fun. Isolated setting, they're stuck in this house together. I just really, really enjoyed it. I would love her to do more stuff like this. This one I remember like people not enjoying it. I remember it being like quite a controvert, not controversial in terms of like problematic but controversial in terms of people having different opinions and I was just looking at them all and I'm like you just don't get what she's doing here you just don't get how she's paying homage to Agatha Christie you don't get it if you get it you get it if you don't you don't if you know you know if you don't know like I honestly feel bad for you like uh, so I really really love this one this was on the list last time and it's retained its spot number seven is the mysterious case of the Alperton Angels by Janice Hallett Janice Hallett is an author for me that's like almost bigger than some of her parts I just love what she's doing with the murder mystery genre like for me she's up there as one of my favorite murder mystery authors I loved the Twyford Code Twyford Code is another interesting one it's similar to the, mur uh, the murder of Roger Ackroyd which I gave both them 4.5 stars but like I don't love 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 the entire book but an amazing twist <laughs> like one of the best twists ever. I love the twist of the Twyford Code. But anyways, this one is about a cult where there was a mass unaliving like 20, 15, 18 years ago, some 18, I think 17, something like that <laughs> years ago. And there was a baby who people had seen around the cult. The mother and the baby disappeared into the care system and we're following two journalists as they try to piece together what happened because the baby is gonna be turning 18. So people want to interview them now that they're an adult. And this is another mixed media. It's my favorite Janice Hallett because it's a variety of mixed media. We have emails, we have, you know, um, audio transcripts, we have text, we have a script that's really interesting. There's, there's a lot of different forms of mixed media, which I really enjoy. My issue with like, the appeal by Janice Hallett was that it's just emails and that can get a bit repetitive but there's a lot of layers to this one and this to me is her most recommendable book. I think the Twyford Code, I can understand why some people don't like it. The appeal, a lot of people enjoy but for me was a bit debut-y whereas this one I feel like she's worked out the kinks in this kind of mixed media format and I just loved it. I loved the journey of reading this book, it's unputdownable. I will say you need to read this book pretty quickly. I think I read it in two or three days and like three days is your max. Like you need to read it quickly because there's a lot of threads. There's a lot of little hints being laid very cleverly that you're trying to like, you feel like you're trying to hold together, <laughs> um, which is amazing. Like I want there to be a lot of little scattered parts of the book that you're trying to pull together. But I'm like Scooby and Shaggy. I'm solving a mystery. But I think if you read it over a longer period of time, you would struggle and the book would not have as much of an impact. It wouldn't be as enjoyable. Cause you're like, what? Like you're trying to remember lots of different things. So I would, save this for a time when you know you can read it pretty quickly in a couple of days because otherwise I think the reading experience would suffer. Coming in at number six is an absolute classic and it is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I think our only YA on this list. And listen, I know I did a video recently talking about how much I hated the adaptation. Hopefully Holly Jackson did not see that. <laughs> me when Holly Jackson confronts me over saying the show was shit. I do not ever remember saying that. But it did quite well in the algorithm, so I'm a bit concerned that she might have done. <laughs> oh, 
Holly. I'm sorry if you're out there. But I love your writing. I love the books. In this, I'm sure many of you know, we're following Pip as she tries to solve what happened to Andy Bell, who was a girl who went missing, presumed dead in her town, and people believe that the boyfriend did it. There's like a vague kind of confession, but Pip doesn't believe it's true. And this is another mixed media. Oh my god, there's so much mixed media. <laughs> I think this is, this is the last mixed media, guys. This is our last mixed media. I just love it. I love it in Murder Mysteries. And I mean, I don't want to sound like a broken record talking about how this book is amazing and the show was shit, but like, <laughs> just what this book does is so good. The way the mystery builds, the way that, oh, Pip grows as a character throughout this series. I just love, I love this series. I love it, love it. I'd only call the first book a murder mystery. The second book is more of a missing person mystery. And the third book is like a thriller. It's, I mean, the third book's incredible. The third book's probably my favourite in the series, but it's not a murder mystery, so it's not on this list. And yeah, the mixed media in this is amazing. Like, like, oh, I love the interviews. And then we'll get into another book about interviews actually in a second. But I love the interviews in this, and they just, they ruined it in the show, they ruined it. Ah! The, the interviews were like two sec, two questions in the show for like 30 seconds. Oh, it pisses me off. Oh, let's not talk about it. But the book is amazing. The book is amazing. The series is amazing. I cannot recommend it enough. The album's amazing, song to song. I can't stress it enough. You guys should definitely pick it up if you haven't already. I feel like probably everyone has by now, but it's so good. Then, very interestingly, coming in at number five, whew, let's talk about it guys, is a book that I believe was number one last time I did this list. And there's books on here that were lower than it. <laughs> that were lower than it last time I did it. But I just don't think this has stood the test of time for me quite as much as some of these other books. And it's The Guest List by Lucy Foley. For a long time I had a lot of like an attachment to this book because this is one of the first murder mysteries I ever read. I can't remember if I read this or the book that's second that I keep, I keep referring to in this video. I can't remember which one I read first but this was a very formative reading experience to me. I did a video, I remember I did a video where I, um, I read Murder Mysteries and I read this, The Hunting Party, and something else. Maybe I read The Strange Case of Zachary's Daughter for that video as well, even though that's not a murder mystery, <laughs> but I kind of thought it was from the description. I remember I went to the, the talk for this that Lucy Foley did, and this was before it even blew up, because The Hunting Party wasn't super successful, so she was still, like, you know, this book hadn't had the success that they went on to have. And here's the thing, I love Lucy Foley. I just don't think this is held, held maybe if I reread it, and I have reread it, and I don't think I loved it as much, but it's a very formative book for me in terms of my reading journey. And I do really love it. It is a wedding where we, we read from the night of the wedding first, and there's a body that's found in the first chapter. And then we go back to like the day before the wedding and lead up to it. We kind of flash forwards to the night of the wedding, but predominantly the story is leading us through. And we have, as always with Lucy Foley, a lot of different perspectives that are archetypal, that we have, like what are some of their, what are some of their names? Jono, Jono's the best man. We have the bride. We have the wedding planner. We have the plus one. Yeah, so we have all these different perspectives, the bridesmaids, we have all these different perspectives that we're reading from. And Lucy Foley just does unlikable rich people so well that you don't mind getting murdered. I asked like my, one of my favourite genres of murder mystery, unlikable rich people getting murdered. She does it so well, and the storylines, the twists in this, this is like one of the first like real twisty books I read, and I was gagatondra. These twists upon twists upon twists, so good. I, the atmosphere on this, it's like on this island where there's a storm as the wedding's happening, and like you don't, know, you don't even know who's dead. I think that's such a great thing about this book, like you're trying to, you don't even know who's dead. And so you've really got so many different questions. This is still my favourite Lucy Foley, but I'm hopeful. I haven't heard a ton of things about the Midnight Feast actually. I need to go look at seeing some reviews and <laughs> what people have thought about it. Lucy Foley does have a soft spot for me as one of my favourite murder mystery authors. I just think she does it so well. She gives me that classic murder mystery so well. I really love these archetypal characters. Brings That's like peak murder mystery for me. Like Cluedo. You know in Cluedo you have those characters that are like different archetypes. It just, it fills me with such joy. So this has moved down in terms of like what I would rank now, but I still, still love it. Now the next one is as far, like I'm quite strict with what I allow on this list in terms of being a murder mystery. I don't really allow missing person mysteries. I don't allow like more thrillery stuff. Like I'm quite strict with it, you know? This next book is, is as far as I'm allowing to go in terms of, in terms of why, what's happening here. Because this one, you know who's committed the murder from the start. The, the mystery is why the murder's been committed and what, 
people could be behind behind the reasonings of that person committing a murder. And it is Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Julian McAllister. I love this book. Love, 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 love this book. The plot, the, the synopsis just came out for Julian McAllister's next book. I still haven't read Just One Missing Person. Let's not talk about it. But um, her next book is about a woman who's like taking her husband, taking her kids to school. She reads on the news as a hostage situation at a local bank. Her husband is the one holding people hostage that she had no idea that he could even it, it sounds amazing guys it sounds amazing comes out in january i'm so excited so in this one a woman witnesses her son commit a murder i've told you about this so many times but she she sees him commit murder she's horrified she goes to sleep that night she wakes up it's the day before go to sleep, wakes up the day before that. So she keeps going back in time. Sometimes she skips like a week. At first it's a day, a day, a day, a day when it's closer in time. But then she starts skipping, you know, further, further expanses of time. And I loved this. It's such a fun speculative. This is only really the only speculative-y um, murder mystery I have in this as well. Like I said, you know who commits the murder, but it's her trying to figure out why her son did that. And like, you're, you're figuring out the chain of events and the people that play a role in that happening, if that makes sense. So I would, st you know, it's close, isn't it? It's close, but I do love this book. I the rules don't apply. I love this book. I love what Julie McAllister does in this. And it really is just a wonderful, heartfelt book where it's about a mother's love for her son. And I thought, and also, you know, love for other family members. There's a, there's a storyline with her dad that is very emotionally impactful. But really just what this woman will go to, the extents that she'll go to, to look after her son and to figure out why he did what he did. I loved, I loved, I loved, I loved, I loved, I loved. So I, I, I am so, I, this is only the only Jillian McAllister I've read. So I need to get into some more. I need to read Just Another Missing Person. Her new one sounds so good, but I love this one. So we're into the top three guys. This is very exciting. I think you guys can probably guess what a lot of this is. Coming in number three, we have the first of the series that I'm mentioning and it is the Lady Hardcastle mystery series. <laughs> Ah, these are probably my three favourites in the series. We've got In the Market for Murder, which is the third. Don't ask me what numbers these are. <laughs> the Burning Issue of the Day and Death on the Seaside. But I think I'm like nine or ten. I wish they had numbers on them. Um, into the series now. And this is my favourite cosy mystery series by far. We're following... I need to read another one. I'm like craving it. Oh, maybe I'll do that. Mmm. Hmm, I'm not gonna say anything. You naughty, naughty. You teasing me, you naughty, naughty. <laughs> We are following Lady Hardcastle and her maid Flo as they solve murder mysteries together. It's set in Edwardian England. It's set, oh my god, I'm gonna actually, I get emotional talking about this series. I don't know why I love it so much. It's so comforting, guys. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. But they're in this quaint English village, Little, Littleton Cotterill. And you've got, like, by now, we've got this cast of characters in the village who you know so well. And they're just solving murders, baby. They're just solving murders. And I'd love it. <laughs> why do I get so emotional? This series, I just adore. Yeah, hard to talk about. <laughs> it really is incredible. It's emotional. If you're going to read them, listen to the audiobook. The audiobook narrator is fucking incredible. The audio I own the books because I love them, but you don't need to. These are just like, these are like self -pub they're not self-published. I think it's one of the Amazon publishers that he publishes them through, but you don't need to own the books. You can just listen to the audiobooks. The audiobooks, oh! Guys, it's so good. This narrator is so, so, so good. So good. So, so, so good. I can't explain to you how good <laughs> this narrator is. And I just, I get, like, I, it, get, it makes me emotional thinking about this here. I don't know why. I just love them. I love, this is like my, it feels very special to me. I just love this series. And they're just quaint little murder mysteries. And they're such good palette cleansers. And, you know, I don't give every book in the series five stars. I think a lot of them, they're usually now for me a 4.5 or a 5. I just really adore this series. I really, really adore this series. And I cannot recommend it enough. Coming in at number two is one that I've mentioned a lot <laughs> in references to other books. But it is Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. 10 out of 10. I love it. This to me is my favourite Christie that I've read so far. I'm getting them slowly. I would like to read another Christie at some point this year. But yes, this is actually, I think, the first Christie I ever read. I do want to reread this at the end of the year, maybe like after Christmas and that kind of like weird time between New Year's and Christmas. I would like to reread this um, because I haven't read it in so long. And I'm up to this point now in the Praro series. Like this would be the next one for me to read. And culturally, a lot of you all know the synopsis of this book. There's a murder on the train on the Orient Express. They're snowed in and the murderer is on the train with Praro and the other guests. And he is figuring out who it is. Now, I've mentioned a few times before, the majority a bulk of this book is Paro sitting down and doing interviews with each person. You're gonna love it or hate it. I find usually people, some people love every Christie, but I find people either love and or dislike 
Merge on the Express, and then Then There Were None. I don't love And Then There Were None because I don't like the scheduled killings. <laughs> like I don't know, like knowing someone's gonna die in the next page. Like I want it to be a surprise. And it's more thrillery almost And Then There Were None. So there's more like excitement, there's more pace. Whereas this one, it's very analytical and it's very him sitting down with all these people and you're trying to piece together the stories that they're all telling and find the lies. And like I said, when I alluded to this earlier, an incredible twist. Ah, that's history. <laughs> An incredible twist. So far the best twist of uh, Chrissy that I've read are this and Murder of Roger Ackroyd. But this one, if you don't know it, like please, please read this soon <laughs> so that you, if you have not yet got spoiled for this twist, because it's quite influential, read this soon so that you can read it having not get spoiled for the twist. Because I feel like at some point you will. I read it not having been spoiled for the twist and I just loved it. I loved, I think it's ingenious. I love Agatha Christie's mind. So yeah, I do want to reread it soon, but I just love a Christie. They're just so well written, so fun, but easy. You know, they're not super long. They're pretty easy to get through. So I do want to read another Christie soon. And then number one on the list, we have the Thursday Murder Club series. It wasn't going to be anything else, was it? For me, my favourites are the first and the last. The last is my favourite so far in the series, but probably not because of the murder mystery, if I'm being completely honest with you. My issue is I read numbers two and three. Oh shit. I read numbers two and three like back to back almost. I read them like a month apart, whereas everything else I've had a year between. So I honestly cannot remember the difference between two and three. I need to do a reread at some point, maybe next year when the fifth comes out. But um, I, I can't remember the difference. But for me, number one, I think the mystery is great. The mystery out of all of them stands out for me in this one. I think the murders are really fun. The way the gangs start to come together. And there's also a few moments that made me cry. Number two and three don't really make me cry. Number four, dig on. <laughs> If you want to cry, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what trauma looks like. I'm sure you all know what this series is. Following a group of elderly characters who live in a retirement home who solve murder mysteries. And not only is it a great murder mystery, but Richard Osman, my guy, <laughs> I love this man so much. The way that he writes human nature and drills down into what makes us tick and what, what we love as humans, the small, the minutiae, the kind of mundane everyday stuff that people don't talk about. I think he's in incredible, incredible. I, I just can't ex ex describe to you how he reflects human nature, but how the humor in these books, they're funny, they're lighthearted, they're joyful. But this one, oh, <laughs> dear God, like it is so, emotional you i i have not cried like this at a book i can't remember another book that i have cried probably to this extent maybe like the traveling cat chronicles that's up there but like screaming crying screaming crying screaming crying throwing up like it's it was amazing it's an amazing book it's an amazing series i'm very excited for his new release this year we solve murders which will probably be on this list next time we do it hopefully but um yeah i just think richard osman five star five star always to me i just love this series so much if you have not picked it up yet please, please do. I've heard if you're not from the UK, the audiobooks can be helpful because there's a lot of like niche UK references like to, I don't know, The Chase, <laughs> the show The Chase or like Great British Bake Off or something. There's like some British references you might not get. And I, I've heard that the audiobook can help with that. Um, kind of like understanding the context of what's going on, just the way things are said. But I personally just read these physically and I love just reading them physically. But yes, I love... I love, I love, I love. <laughs> so there we go, everyone. That is my top 10 murder mysteries. We'll probably do this list again in two and a half, three years. <laughs> I think that's a good amount of time between doing them because I have to keep it updated because there's ones on that list that are, you know, that aren't, aren't up to date. So um, yeah, I'd love to know what some of your favorite murder mysteries are. I'm always looking for more murder mystery recommendations. Like I'm a picky girl. There aren't a lot. There's probably only like 20 murder mysteries out there if we're like including the different books and series that I've given five stars. Like I'm quite picky with it. So I'd love to know some recommendations of ones that you guys have loved. Let me know if you've read any of these on my account and what you thought of them. I'd love to know. Like I love hearing people's experience with books that I've recommended and what they thought of them. Like so many of you reach out to me about the Lady Hardcastle series. That makes me so happy when you guys love them. Like I'd love to know your guys' opinions. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!